Yo, 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 what's going on? It's Terrell, Hall of Fame, d Lad, TBKC, all that other sweet, beautiful, wonderful shit. <laughs> this one is um, actually a question a friend of mine is asking. It was about tails. And uh, okay, let me, you know, start this off by saying you previously heard me say that generally I don't think that a tail is the worst flaw. But someone asked me to go into more detail because I think someone else said some things about the tails and I've led on that it's more to it about the tails. So if you want to know the importance of the tails, I'm going to tell you this. I'll do it two parts. When, when, when looking at, you know, uh, if a dog is breedable, for the most part in my experience with the American Bully, um, the tail has not been a big issue. When you have a dog that has a tail issue, uh, generally I've noticed that most of their offspring do not have that. They Some dogs never pass it on. And uh, the dogs are generally healthy and I've not seen a big trigger point uh, to, to make me totally go against it. But at this point in my breeding program, I don't use dogs with any kind of tail issues, any type of bites as I'm tightening down the program for certain I mean, for certain quality. And uh, that's the evolution of the breed is you knocking away issues, not adding issues. But studies have shown, y'all you know, excuse me as I take a sip. Studies have shown that there are some telltale signs that come, <laughs> that come with the tail. I wasn't trying to do a pun there, but... There are some signs that come along with this, and the tail itself is an extension of the spine. So when you see an abnormality with the uh, with the tail, it does key off other points. And some real studies with uh, certain breeds have shown that it's, it's something there. You know, uh, some of the issues that this tail could um, actually tip off to is a lot of development issues, and one in particular is the narrowing of the spine. You know, uh, any uh, skeletal issues that come along with it outside of the skull. There, the studies find out that for whatever reason, nothing is correlated between the development of, uh, of the skull. But there is a, uh, a correlation between the development of the other, uh, the other bones along with this tail. Now, where we have to be careful at is not all tail uh, issues are actually uh, genetic. Sometimes what happens is there's breaks and there's uh, other things that happen, you know, in the process. The mother stepping on the tail, the, you know, the, the dog smacking his tail against something at a young age when the uh, vertebrae are not set and are not that hard and, and all such things. But we're talking about a natural kink here and some of them are, you know, just so terrible, you know, that that's a kink. Now, uh, this study did show, like I said, it's, it is an extension of the spine. And with the abnormalities in the tail, which we can say is the spine, is that, you know, studies are showing that, you know, the narrowing of the spine, the underdevelopment of the spine and certain issues can be linked to passing this on. And what they find out is that the dogs with kink tails tend to, uh, in, in certain breeds, tend to uh, have a higher probability of producing dogs that does have these spinal issues and other bone development issues. Uh, secondly, which is pretty strange, but actually interesting, is that it's, it's plenty of studies that support this, that it actually has something to do, it, it correlates with the uh, development of the vessels of the heart, which is strange when you think about it's a bone issue, but they, they say it's the, the reason why the tail, it goes back to the source. The reason why the tail was deformed is because that is a symptom. It's not actually the problem. That is a symptom of something that's going on there in a the development. And some of the things that are happening with the vessels of the heart and uh, and some certain arteries in different, in different situations is that the dogs that uh, have kink tails are shown to produce a higher rate of heart issues and uh, cardiovascular issues for whatever the reason is. And this is science. This is not something that I'm just making up. And, uh, you know, it was very interesting uh, to read a lot of the articles and to, you know, to go back, uh, you know, even when I was in school, they talked about it some, but everything is a precursor to, to one thing or the other. And the tail itself is not as simple as we think. And like I say, this video would be like 30 minutes long, but do do understand that you should try to breed away from the, uh, from the tail. I don't think it's as, I, I've never thought that up front it was the type of issue like the hips are, it's just a, right now we can't breed a dog with bad hips. I think in some instances you can get away with a dog with a, uh, with a kink tail. I've done it. 
but it's not something that you continue to play with. You don't continue to double up on that gene because it's very volatile and it does show signs that there is something wrong there and that you can embed this in your genes and cause way more issues than just a kink tail. You know, and uh, even in the American bully world, you know, we have to watch a lot closely to see this because there are a lot of dogs with kinks and tail issues now that are being bred. And I don't know if it's uh, the reason why, but there is a, these dogs do tend to throw a lot more health issues. So it's something that, you know, if we're going to be better breeders, we need to look, you know, look into. Like I said, personally, uh, over the last few years, I've totally cut out using dogs with kinks and any issues with the tails. And I think these studies make me even feel more so that, yeah, I probably need to stay away from it. You know, um, like I said, that the, the, the science of it is more precise than my personal experience. My personal experience, I haven't seen a ton of issues with it, but you know, the science of it does make me think, and as I think about certain things that happen with certain dogs and the probability of these dogs producing certain traits, it does make a lot of sense that the tail issues are a precursor to more health issues to come with the dogs and you know and using dogs with those tail issues could become an issue so you know with all that being said i know that was confusing but you get the general message that we probably do want to stay away from kink tails and it's not just a tail it's a lot more than a tail and uh it can let you know a lot of different things that's going on uh you know in your genetics without you know being super super scientific it's just something as breeders that we should watch out for we should stop breeding the the tail issues we should stop breeding the bad bites we should stop breeding all of these different flaws and really get our stuff down to being very precise to try to make the perfect animal and don't start with there's no perfect animal that doesn't mean that we can't try but until next time i get with y'all later much love peace